Hello from the Parenting Network. This is Mr. Deshaun, and I welcome you to Bot Ben's Life Skills Lesson with help from our genie, Assertive Communication. Glad to have you here with us today. I am a part of Team Relate, Relationship Education, Leading Adolescents Toward Empowerment. And as a part of today's lesson, we are going to learn what assertive communication is. We're going to talk about how to become more effective at it. And when are the times in which we want to use assertive communication to be heard um, and as well as to hear what is being said to us. So with that, one thing we do think about a lot is just if things could just happen magically, that would be wonderful, right? If we could find a magic lamp, rub it, genie come out and help us, and we don't have to really process or think how do we handle these situations, but that's not reality. And reality is though, that we have to have the skills uh, to be able to look at a situation, to adjust to it, and to say, okay, this is what might be best for me. Right here at this moment, if you would go ahead and pause and grab a couple of sheets of paper, um, because those sheets of paper will help us do a couple of exercises that's going to allow us to be more connected to this activity and to really think and process through assertive communication. So go ahead and pause right now. Thank you for taking that time out to go ahead and grab those pieces of paper and welcome back. So let's talk about communication a little bit more. And we learn that there are a couple of different types of communication, or a few, we should say. So you have aggressive, uh, which oftentimes may appear to be demanding, controlling, pushy, mean, loud, selfish, maybe even a bad listener, thinks they are always right, overreacts, and there's often a lot of drama involved in aggressive communication. Passive communication may look like someone is talking with a timid voice. They may be afraid to speak up, lacks confidence, gives in, avoids confrontations, ignores situations, and may easily be manipulated. Again, we know that some people aren't always one or the other, and oftentimes what our goal should be, and Jeannie is going to help us with this dish that he has for us to unveil what we should hope for, which is assertive communication. That should be our goal in which we speak with confidence, we're standing our ground, we're making eye contact in those appropriate situations, we're a good listener, we're clarifying confusion, we're using I statements, we're expressing in an honest, open and responsible way. That's the goal of being assertive. Uh, so if we could find a way to be assertive in situations, those often will help us become um, more likely to get our needs met and to even meet the needs of others. Now, reality is that we don't always have the ability to get our needs met in a situation, but we should still be assertive. Um, I'll speak from the standpoint of being an African-American male, is that there are times when I might be perceived when I'm assertive as being aggressive. So sometimes how you're perceived or seen may be based on the bias or the lens of the person doing the listening. So understanding that and realizing that sometimes there may still be a little bit of confusion when you are assertive and people seem to assume because you're assertive, it means you're being aggressive. Uh, also, I do know individuals who are women that often face that because they may say something in an assertive manner that they're being bossy or that they're doing something, saying something disrespectful. So we're gonna be honest in this conversation and we're going to talk about how do we do our best to be assertive um, and to be received assertively. Also realizing that sometimes, and it will oftentimes, it's the responsibility as well of the listener or the other person that we're dealing with to understand assertive communication as well and not to take offense when we are being assertive and not aggressive or passive in a situation. And on the other foot, there are some times when we're being assertive, but not as assertive as we want to be, and it may come off as passive, but that coming off as passive might be what gets us out of the situation and allows us to assertively deal with it in another way. And those are things that we have to be honest about and talk about. And it's a good discussion to have with your parents 
uh, good discussion to have with other adults in your life. And even amongst your peers, how do we uh, be assertive and understand situations and circumstances and how to be effective? So with that sheet of paper I had you take out earlier, I want you to go ahead and to think about a few things when it comes to our communications and what does that really look like. When it comes to handling difficult situations, I would like you to think for a little bit and describe a situation where you had trouble being assertive. So we have some examples on our page. Maybe it was saying no to a request by a friend, expressing a difference of opinion, asking for a favor, letting someone know why you were upset, having someone cut in front of you or ahead of you in line, explaining to a teacher why you think they are being unfair. And we do know those situations may arise because teachers, parents, other adults, they're human. And sometimes they may make a, a mistake or an error in how they may treat someone. But how do you explain that to someone and saying no thanks to a salesperson or someone wanting you to buy something that you didn't want to? So those are all examples, or maybe you have a different example, but go ahead and write that down. What would that example be where you had trouble being assertive, where you maybe didn't really master it in the moment? And then we'll take a look at why was it hard to stand up for your rights or to express your feelings to others who were involved? So was it maybe because you were angry, maybe it was because you just didn't have the right words, or you felt so hurt or violated by how they treated you, or you felt you were treated, that you didn't know exactly how to stand up for yourself in that space. So take a moment and write down why it might have been hard for you to stand up for yourself in that moment. And then take a moment and imagine yourself being pressured to do something you really don't want to do. How would you handle that situation? So again, thinking about a situation that you are being pressured to do something you don't want to do, it could be one of the examples. And how would you handle that situation? So even futuristically thinking, what is a situation that could come up that you might need to be assertive in? And how would you go about it? Uh, and this could be one of those situations that I've just talked to you about previously, um, where it may be difficult to uh, be assertive because of the authority of a person, or what does that look like if that person does have power over you? And how can you be assertive? Or assertive enough to be able to survive the situation and then further be assertive later if you could go to someone to seek justice or seek help. Great job in taking the time to do that activity. Now, let's look at a few examples. If a person wanted to say no to a request from a friend, how would each communication style react to this request? So this is a situation where we just want to take a moment, think about it. So how would someone aggressive who that might be their default setting, they always go to kind of being angry or, or attacking a situation, how would they handle saying no to someone asking them something? So it might be with outrage, um, they might be very insulted by that individual, right? Um, what about someone who's passive? Maybe they'll take a moment and they won't respond to the request or they'll ignore it altogether. Um, and sometimes that might be a, a communication style that's necessary um, to survive that moment or that situation. Um, or they just might be very timid in how they respond to that. Or they might even give in to an individual's request that they actually want to say no to. Um, and someone assertive, they may stand their ground. They may give a reason why they're going to say no to um, whatever is being asked of them. They might even hear or ask the other person for clarification about what they're asking um, and still hold their ground, say, no, I'm not interested in that, or no, that's not gonna be possible. And they may be able to do it in a way that could be understood by the individual asking. So from there, let's think about what advice would you give to each style so they could become a skilled communicator. So thinking about someone who's aggressive or passive, or also realizing that there are some individuals that might be passive aggressive. Um, and passive aggressive would be the idea of maybe not saying something directly to an individual, but maybe saying something behind their back or creating conflict by making so, uh, some type of comment that could create or spark other um, anxieties or issues with that person that you're dealing with. 
But thinking about these styles, to become a skilled communicator, maybe someone who's aggressive, some advice to them would be notice how you feel in that moment, in that space. Uh, listen or uh, try not to be hostile. So go let go of the hostility that you might have in that moment. And sometimes our hostility, hostility comes because of the person we're dealing with and we're irritated or agitated. And we have to figure out how do I let go of that hostility to effectively deal with this and then practice that assertiveness that we're talking about and how do I stand my ground, but not engage or cause conflict in that. Then to someone who's passive, maybe some advice would be really begin to know your beliefs, be firm in them, practice silently to yourself. So maybe practicing to yourself when you can alone or just even within your own head, repeating things to yourself about how you feel about a situation or how you would say no. And then trust in yourself. Right? So have that belief in yourself that you can do it, that you can achieve what it is that your goal is. And so being mindful of that, as someone who's assertive, to be a skilled communicator, you want to make sure that you're being calm, that you're thinking kindly and you're courageous um, in your stance, because there are some times that assertiveness means you're being courageous when others might be doing something, um, or it would be easy to give in to something that you know is not right or is not just. So listening to others is another advice you would give to someone who's being assertive and you want to apply it daily. So you want to do this and practice this on a regular basis to become stronger at it. Um, so we do know that the more you practice something, the better you become at it. Uh, practice does not make perfect, but practice does definitely make better. You create that skill. So what are some reasons people aren't assertive? What would be some reasons that a person who's a, Aggressive might not be assertive or passive might not be assertive. Well, an aggressive person might not be assertive because they know they can get attention. They don't know of any other way to be, but maybe they practice it so long or they've had examples of aggressive behavior that they actually are doing this on a constant basis and don't even realize that's something that they're doing. It has worked out for them to get what they want. So maybe they've been aggressive and they've gotten things for it. And so if we get something for our behavior, we often repeat that behavior. And it also can make an aggressive individual feel powerful that they're able to dominate a situation or a conversation or have control over a person. Someone who is passive, a passive individual they don't get what they want or they don't want to get into a fight. So they might be passive. They're afraid to look foolish. They think it is of no use. So they try, they, why even bother? Why even try? And they don't want to offend anyone. So maybe they're the type of person that don't, doesn't want to hurt someone's feelings or upset someone. So they don't um, assert themselves in those moments and situations. What are some benefits to being assertive? Well, let's take a look. So to be assertive, you might have a sense of personal satisfaction. There's an increased sense of control over your own life. If you're asserting yourself in those right moments and spaces, that you're expressing values that are important to you and that you're gaining the respect and you're also not easily taken advantage of if you're asserting yourself. Uh, so there are some definite benefits to it, being assertive. And again, being able to look at situations and figure out what level of assertiveness do I need to apply to this situation um, that will allow me to be able to move forward from that situation to the next situation or to the next space where I can get resolve or resolution for something that I might feel wasn't justly done to me. So again, going to the proper adult or proper authority to be able to get, um, to get what you need met. So, Changing our passive or aggressive behavior um, is not always easy, but how do we do that and turn it into assertive communication? Well, what we do know that it's not magic, but it is definitely practice. So looking at three steps to becoming more assertive. So step one, state your position. Right? So tell how you feel about the situation, give your answer and speak with confidence. Step two, after telling how you feel, you can state why you felt that way. Explain why you've taken the position you have or you have the feelings you have 
or what do you feel about the request that was made? And for step three, you want to be understanding. Let them know you understand their point of view, their request, or their feelings, but also being confident and letting them know you may not agree with that. And so being assertive in your stance. How do you say no with confidence? So we do know that there are situations that come up where you do need to speak with confidence to that situation. So again, when appropriate and you can, look directly into the eyes of the individual, not down on the floor or away to the side. Don't um, look, try to make a menacing stare or you know, glaring into their eyes, but it's a way to look at someone directly without trying to be intimidating. And again, be doing our best to control how we engage in those situations. It is a challenging because you can't control how that other person may respond. Um, so being mindful of that, but doing our best to stand for ourselves and being confident. Looking at our facial expressions, being sure that we have facial expressions that match what we are actually saying and feeling and using those I statements. I feel this way. I feel that you sh shouldn't have come to me to ask me that because you know that goes against what I believe in. So using I statements. And then also looking at your body posture, facing the person, standing up straight, standing at a comfortable distance away from that individual. Uh, if it is a face-to-face, -face. Uh, so right now we know with social distancing and all, so we're talking about six feet or more. Um, if we're talking to someone, if it's a family member or someone that we have that comfortability with being closer, three feet away in a normal situation seems to be about appropriate social distance, even in trying to have a conversation with someone. So when it comes to being assertive, how do you make a request? Ask of someone something. Uh, so for example, um, you could take out the, another piece of paper and think of a situation um, that you would like to have, be different or have changed. Um, describe the problem or situation to be changed or that you want to be different. So there's an example. I left my backpack at home and don't have anything to write with. There's your situation. And how could you possibly make the request to correct the problem or change the situation? Asking the question, may I borrow some paper and a pencil? So the situation is you don't have what you need to write with. So now you're making the request, may I borrow paper or pencil? This is a way to ask for what you like to see happen or when asking for a favor. So think of another example, you can write that down. What would be another example of wanting to get something that you want um, changed or different? And how would you go about asking to correct that problem or situation? So you could think about some examples as you're coming up with that and think about expressing your feelings again with I statements. I feel, I want, I don't like, I can't, I will, I agree, I'm upset, I need. These are all statements where you're taking responsibility for what's happening and you're also again looking for what that change might be. And even in I statements, you can express what you want that change to be through the I statements. So you're being assertive in risky situations. So these are some situations where we, again, want to make sure that we're being assertive. So sneaking out of the house, sending a sexy or a nude photo to someone, um, these may be a request that people have of us. And so we want to be really careful of how do we assert ourselves if we know they're dangerous and it can cause harm to ourselves right now or even in the future. So stealing from a store, smoking a cigarette, using a vape pen, not giving an item back that you may have borrowed, experimenting with a drug, or getting drunk. These are all scenarios that are risky, that can cause perhaps long-term damage or even immediate damage or harm. So how do we, again, become assertive in those moments? So again, if you have a piece of paper, take a moment to list your, risky, your examples of risky situations where you felt pressured, encouraged, or invited to participate. So what would be some risky situations that you could just jot them down quickly where you felt that someone was pressuring you or encouraging you or inviting you to participate in those situations that may have had or could lead to negative outcomes? It could be maybe telling a parent something or a guardian something that you know wasn't true. Uh, it could be uh, being asked to make an excuse or to cover for someone in a situation. 
that they were going to be involved in, but you knew was not a right situation. So those are all some examples. Take a few moments and write down some of those. And when looking at being assertive, we also have to practice refusal techniques. So what does it mean to have ways of saying no? To stop in the moment and be able to say, no, I'm not wanting to do that or engage in that. So it could be a simple no, which is that no or no thanks. It could be tell it like it is. No, I'm not interested. I don't want to do that. Give an excuse. If it is necessary, you can give an excuse to say, no, I don't have time. Or if you really feel like the situation can become very pressured or you feel like there's really nothing else you can do, you can do the big stall, which is to say no, but I'll think about it. You can also change the subject. No, but did you hear about or did you see this situation or anything that can change the subject from that? You can also, if need be, be a broken record. Say no, that's not what I do. No, I don't want to. You can walk away, say no, say no, and then walk away from the situation if you can do so safely. The cold shoulder, ignore altogether, and then avoid the situation. If you know that individuals that you're associating with or hanging with are constantly asking you to do things to put you under pressure or invite you to do things that might be harmful, it may be time to hang with others, to find a new group to associate with when you can um, do so. Or also talk to a trusted adult if that becomes challenging and you feel like you do need to avoid the situation but don't know how to go about it. So when looking at assertive communication, we wanna have an action plan. That means what would you say or do in each of these situations that is using assertive communication styles? So what you can do is take a moment and after we list all of these, you can pause and just take some time and practice. What would your action plan be with these situations? And you can invite a parent, a guardian, um, someone else within your household, and have a conversation about what some action plans could look like for you. So you're standing in a long line when someone cuts ahead of you. Hmm, what would be an action plan that you could come up with to how you would handle that situation assertively? What about you're in a no smoking area when the person next to you lights up a cigarette? What would your action plan be? How would you handle that situation? Because we know those situations can occur. How about you're offered a beer at a friend's house, everyone is drinking. So you're at a sleepover, you're at some type of event and someone is drinking and they're offering you a beer or alcohol of some other kind. What is your action plan? How would you proactively see yourself handling that situation? Your friend wants to borrow your earbuds, but you don't want to lend them out. So someone wants to borrow your earbuds. You're like, no, I don't really want them to have them. How would you handle that situation? And then this one, you're at a party, a blunt is being passed around. You don't want to smoke. So you've decided that that's not something you want to do. How, what would your action plan be in that situation to not have to engage in that behavior that you don't want to engage in? What other things or situations can you think of where you might need an action plan and what would those action plans look like for you? So could it be that someone is asking you to engage in some type of other behavior, uh, perhaps of a sexual nature that you're not comfortable with? What would your action plan be? Or someone's trying to get you to lie in a situation that you know could possibly come up. Or you know you might have to deal with a situation of someone of authority, uh, such as police or other individuals within our community that might you know, ask you questions or come to you with situations. How do you handle those situations proactively, thinking ahead of time, what could this look like if I'm not able to handle it assertively to move to the next level of what this could be? So again, sometimes being assertive means saying what you need to say in that space to be able to remove yourself from that situation and then going to someone that you trust that you have belief in, that you, can, you believe may be able to assist you to the next level of getting some results and assertively handling the situation even after the fact. I appreciate you all listening. Thank you for your attention. Be strong, be brilliant, be assertive. And again, there is no magic lamp for this. So create your own magic 
and I know you have it in you already, the skills you need. We're just developing them. We're practicing them so we can become even better at these things that we're working with. So again, create your own magic. And we will see you later from the Parenting Network. Once again, I'm Mr. Deshaun. Thank you so very much for your time and listening.